Hello, and welcome back to Dr. Hollowed. I'm John, and we hope you're doing well. In today's topic, we're going to be covering the eeriest thing that has happened to people. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My house is next to a patch of woods that are about six miles thick. The patch is surrounded by neighborhoods so it's common to see people on walks within the trails inside it. One afternoon I went to do my usual thing which was sitting in a particularly comfortable tree and reading. It was a Saturday which is usually the busiest day for the area, usually there's people going all around the place. And that was true up until maybe an hour into my book I took a moment to look around only to notice just how quiet it was. I didn't hear anyone at all which was very unusual. I kind of assumed it was just momentarily, I found myself waiting for someone to be in any way audible. I sat there for two and a half hours and didn't hear anything whatsoever. At this point I was feeling kind of creeped out with just how abandoned everything felt. I hadn't been paying attention to my phone which I left on the floor near the tree along with my lunch. I climbed down from the tree to pick up my phone, I had at least 40 missed calls and countless text messages from my family. But what really caught my attention was the emergency alert. My stomach dropped once I read it, a man had killed multiple people and was now roaming the town. The entire town had been locked down hours ago. I quickly gathered my things and ran back to my house. About halfway there I briefly saw a man standing nearby a neighboring home. I don't know what the guy looked like but I just had this gut feeling he was the man. He didn't notice me, and I made it home safely. He luckily didn't get to anyone else within the time and was arrested soon after. I will never forget the feeling of reading that message. When I was a teenager in the 90s, for a few months weird unexplainable stuff started happening in the house. Scratching noises, taps suddenly turned on full blast when I was the only one home, toilets flushing by themselves, the radio suddenly switched on but only playing static. It always happened when I was the only one around so I thought I was just imagining things. One night however I heard a man's footsteps, but I got up and checked and there was no one there, yes, I am that character in the horror movie that dies, lol. Anyway, this was all super weird but I never told anyone. I don't know why but I honestly thought my mind was just playing tricks on me. Especially cause one day it also just all suddenly stopped. No more weird shit. I lived there for three more years, and my mum still lives in the house and I stay there once a year. Two years ago, after the COVID lockdowns I went to visit my sister who is two years younger than me. We're both around 40 at this point and for the first time we start talking about the weird noises in the house we grew up in. Turns out she heard them too. She told me that her and her friend decided to do a Ouija board one day and thought they were talking to something, some sort of male spirit, or God knows what. Apparently after the Ouija board session the noises and weird shit started happening. My sister heard the things I heard, but also heard footsteps on the roof. The thing she told me that creeped me out the most was that one day she was getting ready for work and was quickly vacuuming her room. She accidentally vacuumed up a pair of underwear, and pulled apart the vacuum to find them, and went through the dust bag, but they weren't there. She was like fuck this I'm going to be late so went to have a shower. She came back from the shower to find the underwear laid out on her bed, completely clean and not like they'd just been in a vacuum. Apparently my sister's friend got so freaked out about everything that she told my mom. I had no clue any of this had happened, so of course at this point in the conversation with my sister I am slightly freaked out so I messaged my mom and asked her if she remembered anything weird happening in the house when we were teenagers. My mom is almost 80 now and very religious. I expected her to say she didn't remember anything. But she said she remembered the cats meowing at the ceiling a lot, and she also experienced the tap slash toilets flushing. When my sister's friend told my mom that her and my sister had done a Ouija board together, she went to the library and did some research, and in her words prayed, and cast the spirit into the river, there's a large fast flowing river a block from our house. I knew nothing about any of this. Just that for me, the experiences started, and then suddenly stopped. I'm actually a little freaked out typing this because it's just so bloody unbelievable. Late one night after work, I was walking home from a train station. I had to walk through a commercial shopping area, all the stores were closed and there was no one around. My neighborhood is generally safe, and at this point in time I had not experienced anything sketchy, but for some reason I was on edge. When I walked past a gas station, I saw three men standing beside the building and immediately felt that something was off. I had an unshakable feeling that they were going to try and hurt me. I am a small woman, so the number of guys was extremely alarming. I quickly changed my direction and hurried towards a grocery store which still had its lights on. I noticed one of the men started following me. I moved faster and another guy, who appeared from behind a corner of a building pretty much out of nowhere, 
was also behind me. Luckily, once I made it to a well-lit area and called my husband, they stopped and loitered near a random car, then went back to the gas station. The feeling I had before was so eerie and the fear of being followed is indescribable. Unfortunately, this is not the last time I have had to deal with something like this, but the feeling I get beforehand has saved me each time. Not eerie just thought I'd share as it literally just occurred an hour ago and is quite similar to what you see in the TV shows and movies. Me, my GF, her friend, and her BF were just out at a bar. We sit down next to a couple and we all started talking etc. Eventually they all started talking about shit related to their work and how he's some kind of medical outlier in the history books etc. Meanwhile his wife is acting very strange and she's super talkative and sounds like some crackhead lady. But they weren't bums, these guys had money and the wife was actually quite attractive. Keep in mind we're in our 20s and these guys are like 50 plus. They invite us all to their house next to the bar and for someone reason my GF's friend is like oh sure. Very strange emo to just go to some couple's house after meeting them for an hour or two. Anyways, we went. His wife was being talkative the whole time at the bar and all of a sudden we get to the house and she looks like her brain just turned off. She had just made some drinks for us and my GF and I rejected the drinks, but the other two took them. So like I said, all of a sudden his wife just goes brain dead and just gets super quiet. The guy looked fine and just kept talking and talking etc. Just a strange situation where I think these two were either trying to have an orgy with us or it was some dumber type of shit. Just wasn't getting good vibes from them, it was just so strange that they just welcomed us into their house and they literally had just met us. Also, the guy kept insisting he make me a drink and I was like no I'm good. He's like oh don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. In my head I'm like. Dude that's literally the worst possible thing you could say to me RN. Just super sketchy and super strange. Happy it didn't go bad, but I was prepared for shit to hit the fan. So when I was like 9 to 10 years old my grandparents and I had just left Walmart and went to McDonald's to get some food for the drive home. We went inside and I used the restroom. My grandma said she would wait on me outside the door. When I came out she was gone. She wasn't in line, in the dining room, nowhere. I thought no biggie, I'll just go to the car where my grandpa was waiting. Maybe she is there? I get outside and the car is gone. Like totally gone. Just a couple cars in the parking lot. I start to freak out and go back inside and ask the worker if she had seen my grandma. She said no, you walked in just now and that's the first I've seen you but there's been no old ladies here. I start to panic as something just felt completely wrong. I grabbed a pay phone in the vestibule was the 80s, on the opposite side of the restaurant and called my grandparents phone number at their house. A man answered. No one should have answered the phone. No other men lived there. No one should have been home. I lived with them so I knew. I got scared and hung up the phone before I could say anything. I ran back inside and through the restaurant to the doors on the other side of the building where I'd originally came in. I looked outside the door and there is my grandpa sitting waiting exactly where I left him. Then I turned back and there was my grandma coming towards me at the door with a bag of food. We went to the car and left like normal. I'm not sure what happened during the time I was inside the restaurant but I can without a doubt say, the car was gone when I looked, my grandma was not in the restaurant as I was looking for her and a man did answer the phone at their house when I called. It was like I warped out of reality for 5 minutes then popped back in. A few years ago I was spacing out on the couch when I heard my mom call my name from her room. I answered back and after a moment she poked her head out her door looking very confused. She explained that she was folding laundry when she looked up and saw me standing outside directly up against her bedroom window with my back to her. She was wondering what I was doing and called my name. But when I responded from the living room she said the me outside her window kinda slowly slid off to the right without moving. We were the only two people at home that day and we assumed maybe it was someone outside who happened to look exactly like me. Naturally, I checked around the house and didn't find anyone, but there's a major problem with that theory. Her only bedroom window looked out onto the carport. And directly below her window was a giant gas grill that was bolted to the foundation. Whoever was standing there would have been standing inside the grill and slid sideways through it and the fence next to it. Funnily enough, despite my mom being super into the paranormal we both immediately decided that it must have simply been a hallucination. It actually happened several times over the next month. Always me and always with my back turned turned to her. And yes, we talked about going to the hospital over it but if I remember right she never did and it eventually stopped. Never happened again. Still with every skeptical bone in my body the idea of someone close to you seeing a copy of you where they shouldn't be is enough to make you shiver. For our honeymoon, my wife and I road tripped from Michigan to Bull Shoals, Arkansas, where my cousin gave us use of his cottage for a week. Beautiful countryside, especially in early fall. 
When we finally arrived, unloading our stuff into the house, we heard the howling of coyotes in the moonlight, which made us move a little faster. There wasn't another neighbor for at least two miles in each direction, and it was pitch dark except for an outdoor light on the shed in the back, so the seclusion contributed a little bit to the eeriness of it. Later that night after dinner, we stepped onto the front porch, amazed by the blanket of stars overhead, a sight neither of us city kids were used to. Meanwhile, the kitchen light inside flipped on for a few seconds, then turned off. It wasn't a surge, and it wasn't motion detection. It was weird though. The next day both of us smelled burning sulfur, and wondering where it came from, she wandered into the kitchen, I went to the basement, and as suddenly as the overpowering aroma arrived, it dissipated. Okay, I thought, that's two things now. That night, I heard someone trying the side exterior door handle, which was weird, because like I said, there were no neighbors nearby, and the road was pretty secluded. I saw the exterior light on the shed illuminating the door, and the handle kept rattling even as I approached. There was no one in the window that I could see. I shook it off, chalked it up to imagination and an unfamiliar place, and went back to bed. I laid down next to my wife, who was asleep. I glanced at her face in the moonlight, and I was shocked to see it grotesquely twisted into this evil, demonic-looking countenance. I had never seen that before. It nearly stopped my heart to see it. What the hell, I thought as I scrambled backward off the bed. I shook her awake and her face relaxed, the twisted scowl giving way to confusion as to why I was waking her up. She didn't realize it, she didn't have a bad dream, and I have never seen her face like that since. We talked about it, and decided we were going to try to stick out the week, as we had another six days there. But the next night as we were laying down to sleep, we both heard the sound of heavy boots tromping up the wooden steps inside the house. I grabbed the curtain rod and cautiously went up the stairs, because I was stupid, or I was strung out on adrenaline, but the stairs led to two upstairs bedrooms and a bathroom, and there wasn't anyone there, the doors were both open, and the windows were both locked up tight. We immediately began packing and left before the sun came up. I talked to my cousin who was absolutely shocked to hear what I shared with him, having never experienced anything like that in his time there, and to this day, I feel like I still owe my wife a peaceful, unhaunted honeymoon. One of my best friends had passed away in a house fire. The night after he had died I was home alone, moping around when the fire alarm in my bedroom, where I had been reading quietly, started going off, like not just the beep, but the full-blown alarm. I changed out the batteries, checked the expiration date, everything was fine. Put it back and about 10 minutes later it started going off again. I was genuinely freaked out at this point. I remembered we had an extra carbon monoxide detector in our basement and figured maybe the alarm had both and since there wasn't an obvious fire, maybe it was CO. I checked the CO detector, replaced the batteries and brought it upstairs but it didn't go off. I set it aside, figured maybe it would take a minute and left the room just in case. Came back an hour or so later, no alarms. Okay. Weird, but whatever. Yet the minute I sat back down in my bedroom, thinking it was just an incredibly weird coincidence, the fire alarm went off a third and final time. Never went off again after that aside from it being tested when we changed out the batteries again later that week or when some cooking in the kitchen got out of hand. It was definitely a functional fire detector. To this day I have no explanation what had happened, it was so surreal and the timing after my friend's death was just unsettling. In the seventh grade, my grandma who had dementia, was kind of nearing the end of her life. We all knew it was going to happen within the next year or so, she was 93 and had a good run, just wasn't up and about like she used to. I was in a school assembly about 9.30 am, I just remember getting a weird twinge in my chest, and had the thought it's time. I shot up and ran to the principal's office, and asked him to use the phone because my grandma is about to die. The principal and I were well acquainted, I was a troubled kid and I spent a lot of time in detention with the guy. I'm guessing my face or voice was enough for him not to inquire, cause he just handed the phone. My mother had been staying with grandma, making her meals and cleaning her up, etc. She answered the phone, typical what's going on now, honey? I cut her off and told her to check on my grandma. The phone was silent for the longest minute of my life, and when my mom spoke there was a long sigh and pause. I just watched her take her last breath. She's not with us anymore. My grandma was an amazing lady and had a huge impact on my life, we spent a lot of time together and were very close, so to me it makes sense that I had some sort of feeling she was departing. Spent the rest of the day in her room waiting for the folks from the morgue to pick her up. Around 2005, I was 8 years old back then, my family went to church very early morning since it was my baby brother's first birthday. Naturally, we went to eat at a fast food chain right after, and there were only our table and the other with customers a table away from us. The place was big and popular, 
in a mall that has its own entrance so they could operate earlier than mall hours. We were all seated and my brother was sat on a high chair. Mom decided to take a video of him with her phone, a Nokia 3600. My mom suddenly went hey move your arms away from the baby. To my aunt who was sitting next to my brother. Aunt said, I'm not touching him. My mom was kinda pissed as she was still seeing the arms during the recording, and her sister insisted it wasn't her. When mom watched the video, she showed it to us that there was an unfamiliar arm. I saw it clearly. It looked like an arm of a woman, with a hanging striped red and white plastic sando bag. I knew there was no one around as I was looking at my baby brother while my mom recorded the video and no one was touching him. It looked so real no wonder my mom thought it was her sis, but the skin tone was darker than my aunt's and we didn't come there holding any plastic bag. We also showed it to the crew exactly after we realized it was a ghost. Since then I believed in their existence. The video were never deleted on my mom's phone but it was stolen at another mall. I wish I knew how to transfer stuff to PC but it was the earlier age of computer desktops and dial-up internet. I learned the hard way that when they put you to sleep before surgery it doesn't always work perfectly, had an arm surgery, luckily it was the last of many, and the anesthesiologist wished me a good sleep, then I just couldn't move. I couldn't move and was present and awake of every single stab and slice, I heard the drill they used and I heard the commentary, I was screaming inside because I felt all the pain and I just wanted to die. It was horrible. When I finally get my movement back after a 7 hour surgery I told the nurse to bring me the anesthesiologist. He came and I told him what happened, he said that it happens sometimes but the patient usually forgets once the surgery is done and that he'd prepare some more painkillers for me and make sure I got some food. It was horrible. Now I get PTSD when I'm in hospitals and my arm burns whenever I drive past one. I've avoided any hospitals since and even when I've been cut deep I've sewn it up myself. It's one of the worst things I've ever experienced and whenever I gain the courage to tell someone about it they say I'm lying and that doesn't happen. It hurts to try to tell people about that horrible experience and then get called a liar. When I was a kid, my parents went on a cruise, and my brother and I were left staying at our grandparents' house. One of the nights we were up watching Animal Planet, and our grandpa came in and told us to shut it off because it was time for bed. It was about 11.45, so we went to bed, but my grandpa left the hallway light on, just illuminating the hall enough to see a little bit. Now the layout of the bedroom is substantially important to how this played out. You go down this hallway, and at the end of the hallway is our grandparents' bedroom. Off to the left before the hall ends is the spare bedroom. The bed is in the back right corner, and the room is very open, so you can see everything from the doorway. I woke up sometime later to my brother whispering my name and asking me if I see that, and I looked over to the doorway to see a woman, probably in her mid-forties. She was very bizarre looking, with a very long and thin face and long brown hair, but imagine a hairstyle out of the 1970s? I wanna say, just standing there staring at us. Her hair was blowing like there was some sort of gust. Yet there was no wind. Our grandparent's dog had been sleeping next to the bed, and she woke up. Her ears perked up like she acknowledged that there was someone there, but after a minute she just laid back down. She just stood there staring at us for what felt like the longest time before eventually backing out of the doorway, her gaze fixated on us until she was completely out of view. Leaving the door slightly open, enough for us to see her go back towards the front of the house. For a while after, my brother and I just sat there absolutely petrified, just waiting to see if maybe it was my grandma and she'd eventually go back to the bedroom, but no. We saw nothing for what was probably an hour, and eventually we fell asleep. We asked about it the next day, and my grandma swears it wasn't her, not that it would have been anyway, as she looked nothing like who we saw, and she's also not the type of person to really joke around like that, she doesn't like being scared. If I were the only person that saw this, maybe I'd be able to brush it off as something that I imagined in some odd fever dream so long ago, but no, my brother saw it too, and if you were to ask him, he'd give you pretty much the same story. Two stories, the first happened when I was a teenager, the second a couple of years ago. One, I used to feel uncomfortable regularly in my parents' old flat, apartment. It was on the top of its block, with the only thing above us an attic that we had access to and needed a tall ladder. For years I used to hear footsteps above me at night time, like heavy military-style boots. The flat already felt rather creepy. The worst occasion was when I was sat up in the evening playing games on my computer at the back of my room. I began to feel incredibly uneasy and felt as if something or someone was staring at me and watching me. This feeling emanated from the same spot in the room each time, a spot near the door. It was so intense that I kept turning around and looking at this spot over a period of time whilst on my computer because I felt so uncomfortable. Eventually, I decided to get a glass of water from the kitchen. I grabbed my glass and went to walk out of my room. An important note here, 
is that we had two cats at the time, neither of which made any remote habit of being near my room often. I had to walk past the spot I felt something in to get out of my room, and as I did I froze at the sight of both of my cats sat in the hallway, staring into my room. Both cats briefly looked up at me, then looked back to a spot in my room, the exact spot where I felt something was watching me from. I freaked out and spent the rest of the night on the sofa in the living room, not sleeping at all. My cats never bothered to sit there and watch again, nor did I ever get that feeling, at least not that intensely, ever again. 2. A couple of years ago, myself and my girlfriend, now wife, were looking after Imam's dog for a while. I would often walk the dog if she was at work and I was off, or she was unable to for any reason. Nearby to us was a little woods that we used to go through. This woods was split into two distinct parts, with a fence separating either half, all public access though, the path wasn't blocked. We'd walk through the woods, both halves, dozens of times before. On this particular occasion, it was just me and her dog, a Springer Spaniel, so not small and quite confident. We'd happily walk through the first half of the woods and were approaching the second half, where the fence ran up next to the path. My stomach dropped. I suddenly felt incredibly uneasy and uncomfortable. I was staring into this second half of the woods and simply had this gut feeling that I absolutely should not go into it no matter what. One thing that stuck with me here as well, is that the dog, who is usually walking slightly ahead and trying to lead the way, was also not keen on going forward and wanted to turn around. We did just that, turned around and went back, walking rather quickly and looking back on myself as I was going. When we'd gotten back I couldn't shake the restlessness and it actually haunted me for the rest of the day. I felt fear and paranoia for the entire day, to the point where the paranoia made me skeptical of my own girlfriend that evening when I was trying to sleep as if she was planning to physically hurt me. I don't know why and I couldn't shake it at all. I eventually got to sleep, woke up and all was fine. That sickening feeling had gone. The next day in the woods that feeling wasn't there. I do, however, remember a weird smell coming from that half of the woods whilst walking through it not long after, like the smell of death. There were also random small animal corpses that began to be hung on trees around there every now and then, rabbits etc. It was a horribly strange sensation, and one I'd be happy not to experience again. It felt like danger and that I had to get away, and I'm very glad I trusted my gut. My two older brothers and I are alone in our grandparents' house since both of my grandparents and my parents went to a church service around 5 in the morning. The religion to which my family belonged is a local religion that lets you attend church very early in the morning though there are also services in broad daylight. My brother slept inside my grandparents' room while I slept in the living room, there was not enough room back then. I already woke up as the adults prepared to leave for the church service, so by the time they left, I was already half awake. My grandparents' house is basically three rooms that are adjacent to each other, the kitchen, the living room, and the single bedroom, my grandparents. Additionally, the house's flooring is made up of wood, and the flooring is not directly attached to the ground, it is sort of hanging more than a meter above the ground so human footsteps would make stumping sounds. Remember, we lived in a safe and tight-knit rural community, and we still had no electricity back then, so the only light source inside our house was a gas lamp placed right outside the doorless grandparents' room where my older brothers slept. Since I was already close to fully waking up, I was basically just staring at the ceiling while still lying in bed. Occasionally, I would stare right at the single lamp illuminating the entire house. But after minutes of staring at the entire room I was in, I noticed that the curtain that serves as the door for the kitchen was moving intensely. I first thought it was caused by a wind, the curtain was moving for a few seconds. And then suddenly, a dark silhouette was moving inside the living room I was in without lifting the curtain at all, which scares me a lot at this point. I thought it was a burglar, but I suddenly noticed something, the silhouette was floating, since I didn't notice the floor shaking or making a sound while the figure was moving from the kitchen to the living room. The dark figure's silhouette is completely black, no face can be seen. It's like a human shadow walking in three dimensions. The moment the dark silhouette entered the living room, it turned its completely dark face, it looks like a human's face shadow, we know it's a face because of its outline, but the facial feature is not there, right towards me. The dark figure was staring at me probably for a very few seconds, but it felt like a whole minute to me. Then it proceeds to the single lamp that was put outside in my grandparents' room, and the figure was blowing on it like it was trying to put out the fire produced in the lamp. I didn't count how many blows the figures did since I was literally pissed my pants. I was so terrified that I couldn't even make a single sound dot after like a full minute, I think, the dark figure, unable to put out the fire, walked right through the kitchen's curtain without making a single sound throughout the whole incident. I kept my silence, since I don't know what it would do to me if I made a single sound. I didn't even move my body for many minutes after the dark silhouette left. 
I calmed down the moment I knew the sun was already rising. I slept right after it, Lamau. I did tell my brothers and parents what happened, but they dismissed it as either my own imagination or me just lying. I knew this was a messy story. I'm not a native English speaker, so my story might not be as coherent as you're expecting it to be. But it was a real experience of mine when I was still seven or eight years old. I'm not a religious person at all, in fact, I've been excluding myself from the religion that my family raised me in. For all these years, I've been trying to find answers to what happened that early morning. I had never experienced such things before, and after that incident, even after all this year, the memory still sat vividly inside my head. FWB got invited to a wedding. Needed a ride cause it was a few states away. I said sure, we drove down on a Friday, wedding Saturday, drive home Sunday. We knew we're gonna drive home over the night, so we took a nap during the day for a few hours. It was a little after 9 that night when we left. It was about 20 minutes later on the highway, we come up on this lilac colored fog. Like real light purple, light pink color. It looked weird but not unnatural really. I remember slowing down as we came up on. We looked at each a few times saw another car come out the side of the fog cloud. We said fuck it, windows up and run us through it. We passed through it in under 10 seconds. Share a weird look with each other and off we continue. I can still remember and recall a lot of details from our drive down. But neither of us really remember that drive home at all. We both have the same memory of sort of waking up in a parking lot in our home state. No idea on when we got there or why we didn't finish driving the two hours home or so. We both remember three or four gas station stops we made and we can remember conversations we had while we waited or at a rest stop we stopped at for a bit. But neither of us can remember pretty much anything that happened in the car or the drive itself for that entire eight or so hour drive to where we ended up waking up at. We still talk about it occasionally and have never had a satisfying conclusion. Freaks us both the fuck out. Not eerie, just really strange. This happened to me in the summer of 2016. I used to work in a warehouse that stored frozen foods, biological samples that needed to be frozen until they were used, and the like. The point of this information is that to work in a place like that, I had to wear a big, thick, warm coat. Once I left work, I'd shed the giant coat and throw it in the passenger seat of my economy van. Now to the story. I've left work and am making my way home, driving through city traffic, getting ready to hit the highway. I'm zoning out at a red light and I'm just kind of staring out of my windscreen waiting for the light to change when all of a sudden I see the strangest thing. As I'm sitting at the light, I see an orange gold amorphous cloud on top of one of the trees lining the street, just sitting above a giant limb floating. I at first thought I was seeing things or that the light from the sun was being filtered oddly through the tree, but then I noticed it getting bigger and was a bit confused. I then realize it's not getting bigger but, in actuality, is floating down towards me. I'm sitting there in awe, wondering what this thing is, when the light changes and I slowly hit the gas, reluctantly driving forward, thinking that whatever this thing is, I'll never see it again. I was wrong. As I'm slowly driving forward, it's flying towards me and is close to making contact with my windscreen. It's almost like it's shocked I can see it and is just as curious as I am about the whole situation. As I'm moving forward and it's moving towards me, we're bound to meet in the middle. I had never really dealt with anything like that before and didn't know what to expect. I can say, though, that this thing was giving off positive, curious vibes, nothing malevolent or coming from a place of manipulation. I expect to make contact with it, and since it appears like an orange golden gaseous light, I expect it to come in through the windscreen like I'd imagine a ghost would, easily passing through it without an issue. Unfortunately, I was wrong. As soon as this being hits the windscreen, I actually hear a cracking sound. It was so unexpected. I heard a loud crack as it made contact, I then expected at least a small fracture in the windscreen, but nothing. For a second, I thought it had made contact with the car and couldn't pass through, so I left. If that is where everything ended, I would have somehow convinced myself it happened a different way, it was sunlight, not a being, etc, etc. As I'm driving, and right before I hit the entry ramp to the highway, I notice my huge winter work coat sitting next to me is shaking all over. I know this sounds completely insane, but it all happened as I'm telling it. The coat is shaking like a scared or hurt animal, it's not making extreme movements or anything but it definitely is shaking. Imagine a scared dog and how they curl up in a ball and shake uncontrollably all over. That's exactly what my coat was doing. I knew that whatever that being was, it was now in my van, sitting on and in my coat. I have no other way to describe the situation. It just kept shaking, so instead of getting on the highway, I pulled into a Home Depot parking lot and just sat there talking to this entity, telling it that it was okay. I know this sounds completely insane, and I felt crazy, 
But I tried to console it like I would a crying child or scared animal. I put my hand on my coat and petted it. It's absurd sounding, I know, but at the moment I was focused on calming whatever was in my van down and letting it know it would be okay. I held the arm like I was holding someone's hand or paw and just sat there in that parking lot as I watched as the shaking slowly ceased. I then explained I was heading home and had to take the highway, that I'd be going pretty fast, and that it could leave if it wanted. I even opened the door for it. On the way home, I kept replaying the whole thing over in my head and thinking about how crazy the whole thing was. I also knew that if I hadn't experienced it, I wouldn't believe it. I thought I'd never see this being again, but I was wrong. Shortly after this, I started noticing an orange cat like being in places cats are to be expected and places where cats aren't to be expected. First on the road, driving back and forth to work. Different points on the road, and at first I didn't put two and two together. Then I saw it in my parking lot at home. I then saw the same thing in the freezer at my warehouse. I realized that what I had experienced was unique and that this cat being I was seeing was related to that experience. I still doubted myself until I came home from work one day and my girlfriend told me that she thought she'd seen a weird looking orange cat in the house. I of course told her some of what happened with the windscreen and coat the day it happened, but I didn't go into elaborate detail because I knew it sounded completely insane. I definitely didn't tell her I thought an orange cat type being was following me around, I still see him to this day, and she does as well. He seems to have become quite attached to us, I have no idea why, but we've accepted him as well. Don't get me wrong, it's not like I'm seeing it constantly, or even daily or weekly, but I do see it at least every few months. I've woken up to it walking along the floor on two legs, peeking over at us like a little kid would to see if we've woken up yet in the morning. It's always orange golden and somewhat transparent. Me and my girlfriend have both compared notes, and we both agree it's cat-like but humanoid, varies in size from adult cat size too, I guess, a small primate, and is a golden orange with two or three black tabby cat-like stripes that circle its belly and back. Sometimes it looks completely like an orange and yellow tabby with three black stripes, while other times it's definitely more humanoid with cat-like traits. It's always small though, cat-sized to toddler-sized. Even when we don't see him, we know he's always close. I have no idea what he actually is, but I think he's a type of puka, fuka, or puka. I also consider him family now. I know this sounds completely absurd, but I swear to you it's 100% true. I would not make up something so absurd sounding if I was attempting to pass something paranormal off as true. At first I thought I was losing it, but when my girlfriend saw him, I felt better knowing that there was some substance to this being and it wasn't because of some mental disorder. It's never attempted communication as far as vocally or telepathically. It gives off a vibe for sure, though, and I can pick it up rather quickly. I've never been afraid of it. Like I said, we think of it as family. After my experience with it, I started researching and reading about the fae, animal spirits, ghosts, etc., trying to figure out what was going on. I don't really share this story with anyone, and in fact, my girlfriend is the only one who knows the entire story, that is until now. Thanks for your interest. In case anyone is wondering where this happened, it was in Kansas City, Missouri. Thanks.